Greetings and welcome everyone. This is another episode of Carl Spirits and tonight this is episode 69 and we're going to continue in a vein that we started in episode 68 and we're going to be looking at a offering from the Nevada H and C Distilling Company of Las Vegas, Nevada and this is Smoke Wagon. Now in episode 68 I reviewed Smoke Wagon Straight Bourbon 92.5 proof. Uh, this is their small batch offering at 100 proof. And you can see a little bit of difference in the bottling, but uh, we're going to go ahead and, and, and uh, explore that. If you'd like to have a little bit of that historical snapshot that I tend to do about that distiller, I'm going to refer you back to episode 68, let you see that snapshot. But I want to remind everyone uh, just very quickly that Nevada H&C Distilling uh, is relatively new. Uh, their first offering came out in uh, 2016. So it's only about a five-year-old distillery at this point as far as its production or its markability, I guess I should say. And they use MGP juice, but they do age their spirits in Nevada. And they blend their batches uh, with old and young high-rise stocks and uh, they're, they're doing a really outstanding job of blending their bourbon out at Nevada H&C. Uh, this bottle, like uh, the first one, uh, is outstanding. And I'm not much on packaging. I think the bourbon should speak for itself, not the package it comes in. And I really hope I'm not paying for a little fancy bottle. But it is an attractive bottle. It is very similar to the 92.5 proof version, but instead of the screen printed sagebrush blooms and so forth, this is a raised glass. Uh, so it's a little bit fancier bottle for a fancier spirit. They still have their uh, logo in a wax seal that's stamped into the bottle. You can see it's actually recessed in there a little bit. And uh, it still has their motto that I really kind of like a lot, Bibamus. Moriendum esta. And that's Latin for roughly drink, for we must die. And the translation that the distillers give is drink and enjoy, for we may not be here tomorrow. And there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, one further thing before we go on into the tasting tonight, there is no definition of what a small batch is. And this is kind of a label that has... I think is very misunderstood in the bourbon world today. Uh, years ago, small batch was to set it aside from a commercialized dump of thousands of barrels to produce uh, a single expression that everybody could get their hands on. Small batch was supposed to be exactly that, a small batch of barrels. We don't know if it's two barrels in a batch, or we don't know if it's 200 or 2,000. We don't know. It's not a single barrel. That's pretty self-explanatory. But other than that, we really don't know what a small batch is unless they tell us. Uh, there are some distillers that will tell us what they have in their small batch that says it's 20 barrels, or it's 15 barrels, or it's 150, or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, there's no information about what that is here. So let's go ahead and get into the tasting real quick of this small batch from Nevada H&C or Smoke Wagon. And uh, I, you might remember that I was pretty much a fan of their 92.5 proof, uh, their, their basic straight bourbon offering that they wanted to sell as an everyday drinker. This set shares the exact same mash bill. Uh, this is uh, MGP's high rye mash bill. So you got 60% corn. 36% rye, 4% malted barley. So 36 rye, there should be some spice on this, especially at that 100 proof. It should be a little spicier, I would imagine, than the other. Also, there is no age statement, but as it's labeled a straight bourbon, it's at least two years old. Probably like the lower expression from episode 68, it's around the three and a half to four and a half year mark. And again, this is bottled at 100 proof. The color on this, and again, lighting, I know, but this is a medium to light honey. Uh, this is not a coppery color at all. This is a medium to light honey. 
And the nose is fairly light as well. And that's not saying anything's wrong with it. I'm just saying it's got a very delicate light nose for a 100 proof. There's not much hint here that this is a 100 proof bourbon, that that alcohol is there. So I'm getting a lot of dark fruits, kind of like a dark cherry, if you will. Uh, but there's also a definite caramel underlay here. So you have a little of that dark fruity smell, but you also have that sweetness that we really kind of enjoy. So the mouthfeel is on the medium side. It's oily. It's a very oily mouthfeel. That's not saying that's bad. I'm just saying... There's a lot of oils in this, kind of like a, like a citrusy oil. And it has a light citrus flavor at the front, along with a very sweet caramel. And then you get to that rye spice on the back, which I'm calling white pepper sometimes. Really think it's, it, it's not a earthy, it's more of a peppery uh, tartness. A lot of spice dominates the back. So it's a little bit different on the taste than that 100 proof or that 92.5 proof, excuse me. As it lingers in the glass, and you all know I've had this before, I've tried it here out uh, in person. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, there's about, oh, a third of the bottle missing at this point. But as this stays in the glass for a while, it really begins to open up and you get a lot of dry chocolatey flavors. Uh, that begin to emerge, and that's really a nice, nice uh, touch. And so the finish follows with that. You get that chocolatey, uh, chocolatey uh, finish right in the very back of your throat. There's also some leather there and a little oak char. So it's some very attractive flavors for me. Some people don't like those flavors in their bourbon. I happen to. This is very, very tasty. There's definitely a rye spice that is going to linger for a long time in the throat. So this too, like its uh, little brother, the 92.5 proof from episode 68, uh, has a nice little Kentucky hug. Overall, uh, this is a very drinkable and approachable bourbon. The price is around $45, give or take, which kind of seems to be the standard for a production bourbon of this proof. Uh, I'm astounded at the blending abilities of Smoke Wagon. Uh, they're using MGP juice like a lot of other distillers out there, but I really think they have mastered, and I'm going to use that term, uh, mastered the art of blending these bourbons together to really make a very drinkable bourbon that they really have a flavor profile all of their own. I really enjoyed that. So if I was to compare the 92 proof and the 100 proof uh, side by side, if you will, I'm not going to do that on camera. I did do that a little bit just a while ago. Uh, the 92.5 expression is a little sweeter and has a little bit more of a uh, corn forward taste than the 100 proof. I guess one way you could think of that is that the 100 proof is what normally happens as, bar as uh, bourbon would age slightly and has less water added uh, to proof it down. So it's a little bit of a more mature bourbon has less water, and so you get a little different flavor profile. Still, this is very good. Uh, I enjoy this one uh, just about as much as I do uh, the 92.5. And I say just about as much. That's probably a misnomer. I actually like this slightly more because I really like their dimensional finish. I like that chocolate and leather and oak char on the finish. It's not just a one trick pony. It has a little bit more, uh, it has a few more layers, if you will. Uh, on the Carl rating, I went 92.5 proof. Uh, the first one from episode 68, I think I went four stars. Uh, in this one, I'm going to go 4.5 stars uh, just because it has that more dimensional finish. 
So uh, this is another bourbon that I really happen to enjoy. I hope you do too if you get a chance. Again, your opinion may differ, and that's okay. Uh, this is why we taste bourbons. Everyone tastes something slightly different, and everyone has a different taste. That's why there are hundreds of bourbons out there. So I invite you to go out, pick up a bottle, and taste your, for yourself, and find something that you really, really like. And guys, as always, you know my tagline here. I want everyone to stay safe, obviously, but also peace and happy pours.